home. <sighs> All right. So lastly, we have Phil Jackson. Uh, oh, no. Phil Jackson has pissed a lot of people off because he said that he stopped watching NBA games back in 2020 when the NBA was doing the social justice stuff. So uh, Phil Jackson was a part of a podcast with Rick Rubin where he lamented on how he hasn't watched games in a while because it seemed hokey to him that, uh, you know, the NBA was doing this stuff with names, with, with stuff on the back of the jerseys like equality and justice or things on the court like in racism and all of that. A lot of this was going on during the bubble uh, in 2020 with the NBA, which was the craziest year, I believe, in the history of this country between the social justice protests and pandemic situation. But the NBA went into the bubble and social upheaval was still taking place in the country. And the NBA was trying to be on the right side of history by, you know, you know, doing SJW stuff, you know, equality on the back of jerseys and racism and all of this kind of stuff on the court and all of that. And Phil Jackson wasn't necessarily a fan of it. Uh, Phil, Phil re really wasn't here for it. So here's an audio. Uh, now this was Phil Jackson appearing on Tetragrammaton. I hope I'm saying that right. Tetragrammaton with Rick Rubin. A uh, podcast with Rick Rubin called Tetragrammaton. Rick and uh, here's what Phil Jackson had to say about, you know, falling out of watching NBA games. Do you, do you uh, still watch a lot of basketball or no? I don't. Tell me about that. When and did you stop immediately from the time you stopped coaching? No, I didn't. Uh, I watched some of the game evolve and decided, and they went into the lockout year and they did something that was kind of wanky. They did a bubble down in Orlando mm -hmm. and all the teams that could qualify mm -hmm. went down there and mm -hmm. stayed down there. Mm -hmm. No audience. And they had things on their back like, you know, justice and uh yeah i made a little funny thing like uh you know justice just went to the basket and uh equal opportunity just knocked him down and uh <laughs> the uh another name for a guy who has jersey in the back of a jersey he had some other slogan so my grandkids thought that was pretty funny to to, to play up those names so I, I i couldn't watch that and the lakers won actually they they won, won that year and uh do you feel like it just made little of the game like it made it like a sideshow what do you think it was that turned you off well it was it was uh they even had slogans on the floor on the baseline it was catering it was trying to cater to an audience or trying to bring a certain audience into play and it they didn't know it was turning other people off you know mm -hmm. people people want to see sports as non-political Mm -hmm. You know, we've had we've had a lot of different type of uh, players that have gone on to be like you know Bill Bradley was a senator, number of baseball players have been representatives and senators and political, but their politics stay out of the game. Yeah, it's separate. not it doesn't it's separate. need to be there. Well said. All right, and so yeah, that made a lot of people mad. Um, Jalen Rose is somebody who didn't appreciate those comments. Uh, he, uh, said he, the same Phil Jackson that won championships with some of the greatest black athletes in the history of the game, Michael Jordan, wow. Scottie Pippen, Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant made millions on their backs and off their sweat equity. You're wow. sitting there watching the game with your grandkids and y'all think it's funny when justice passes the ball to equal opportunity. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. So stop watching forever. So, and there's other people who didn't like it. So I guess, you know, the fact that they were making jokes about it or saying that it was catering to an audience and all of this other kind of stuff, people don't like what Phil Jackson had to say. Uh, they have a problem with it and they are suggesting that it points to his racist tendencies or his latent racism. 
or his racist beliefs and ideologies. That's what that's what people are saying. So interesting stuff indeed. Uh, do you think that the criticism being levied against Phil Jackson is not enough, too much, or just right? Um, I think that it's uh, way overblown. I don't think it's very necessary. I don't think it was racist at all. Um, I thought it was, um, you know, the joke was, you know, in poor taste, but it's not, it's not racist. It's just not, it's being very insensitive to the situation. Uh, but overall, I think that, you know, the black community, man, it's a quick trigger. They're, they're quick to call someone racist. And, um, you know, without really, you know, evaluating what was either said or done in whatever scenario. And so this one's no different. And so for him to say that, a statement that I agree with, you know, for the, for everything, it was got too political. I got turned off by it too. I didn't want to see that. Oh, no. Oh, so you don't, you don't want, you don't want black people to uplift. So here's, here's the, the mind fudge that was played on these athletes. All right. First of all, the the tape is out. It was 2023. So what has BLM done for black people? And, you know, I'll wait for you to say something. But they haven't done anything. That was just a big marketing campaign. For what? For whatever they want black people to be. And just give people a, give people a march give people uh, the horse and pony show the image of justice. But what justice have they given anything since they started? Just a big money collecting scam, a marketing tool to galvanize black energy into one space that's controlled. Hey, everybody, you're frustrated about what's going on in America? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, and they, they fund all in BLM. All that energy goes into that bucket, money, resources, attention. And then they they just sit there and they hold it, and then they never give any of that back. And so these athletes were sitting there thinking that they were doing a noble cause. They thought they were being on the right side of history by doing all of this stuff. But I can't breathe in this situation. <laughs> Um, I know that's what was said, but why would you wear the last words of a dying man on your shirt? Because there's power in words. And when these guys were running around here, I can't breathe. C-19 was going hammer. People were dying because they couldn't breathe. I thought that was not sensitive to the people that was dying of COVID. So... This whole thing was, to me, was a big marketing push, again, to galvanize black energy into one bucket, so a control bucket, that nothing gets done. And that's that's what these controlled, um, uh, what do you call these movements do. So it got way too political. It, it spilled over into the NFL. These players thought they were doing something. Nothing happened. I mean, it's the worst, wildest stuff going on with black people doing it to each other. You know, people can't even go to Houston no more. They, you, if you go to Houston, you're going to get robbed or shot. And so where's the where's the BLM for that? So we're only here. We're only hearing about the racist stories. Well, what about our stories? Oh, they 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 overblow, you know, the, the crime statistics on what people be calling black on black crime. Okay. So even if they're overblowing the statistics, the statistics, you know, we can go down the line if you black of how many people died of dumb stuff in our own community. That's that was in our families. So we, we can, we can touch it not too far from us for dumb stuff. And what does BLM do for any of that? Have, are they reforming any movement? Are they reform, Are they putting anything in legislation? They're just sitting around there, running around, parading around, stealing energy, and stealing resources. I said it. So Phil Jackson, 
I, you know, he's seeing it from the other side of the fence. So of course he's going to say stuff that that's not necessarily sensitive for, for black people. You know, he's white. Surprise. So he don't know what's offensive, but he's not being racist. So I, I just I just think that, you know, people would just be blowing stuff out of proportion. Oh, I got more to say. But how about you, sir? What do you, <laughs> how do you feel about this situation, man? Do you feel like Phil Jackson was being racist here? Yeah, this was another instance of where's the beef. So mm -hmm. when you say something that doesn't parrot the speech, then it's an opportunity for you to look great because you can criticize that person and curry favor. Um, this is, you know, so the reaction in terms of calling him racist or saying that those comments are racist or that this is somehow indicative of Phil Jackson's racism. Uh, so there's, okay, let me back up real quick. There's two angles with which I looked at this. That's the first one. The reaction to Phil Jackson and the whole race thing and how this is somehow an indication of his racism. The other angle is social justice stuff as a whole, particularly within the context of sports leagues. So let me first address Phil Jackson. If like this boils down to how you fundamentally perceive that kind of rhetoric. If you are an individual who believes that someone saying something like that automatically by default denotes that you have racist belief, uh, behaviors and tendencies, uh, then you're going to believe that that person is racist. Or if you if you're but if you don't by default think that that is an, in, an indication of somebody's a beliefs system, then you're going to look at it in a more well-rounded way. I don't think that because Phil Jackson or anybody, let's take Phil Jackson out of it. Anybody who has anything critical to say about the stuff that was going on with the NBA or even the NFL, because the NFL did it too. They had stuff on helmets and they had stuff on the, on the turf and in the end zone, they were doing it too. They had stuff on the goalposts, the stanchion that's around the goalposts. They had little in racism and say his name and all of this weird stuff. So it wasn't just the NBA. The NFL was doing it too. If anyone has a dissenting opinion about that stuff, I don't think that that is indicative of their racism. No more than I think that if I were to say I'm a movie fan but I don't want to go to the movie theater and before the movie plays, see a PSA on, on not being on, 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 um, you know, trans folk on, 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 on transgender rights. Let's say, let's say that. Right. So let's say, I'm, let's say I love movies and I like going to the movie theater to watch movies. If I don't want to see a PSA on transgender rights before the movie that I'm watching, I don't think that that by default makes me transphobic. I think that that means I don't want to see that before I watch my movie. <laughs> now, others will hear that and they have they fundamentally see it differently. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To them, fundamentally, that does make me transphobic. Just like to them, fundamentally, if you say, I thought that that stuff with the NBA was goofy, that means that you must be a racist or anti-black people or not down for the cause. So it's a fundamental way that you see these things. I look at it as it doesn't by default mean that you're a hater. I don't want to see PSAs about anything before movies. If I like movies, I don't think that that makes me a hater. If you think otherwise, that means we fundamentally see these things differently. Fine. We'll let bygones be bygones. So that's how I see the Phil Jackson part of this. I don't think that there's any racial thing with this at all. Um, but people use it to conveniently make their case that it is because a lot of people are constantly looking for the racism everywhere. And that's not to diminish the presence of it, but look for it in the places in which it actually exists and not right. with people who have opinions like this. Right. Now, here is the thing with the NBA and, and, and all of that stuff. And this is the reason why I didn't like what Kaepernick was doing when he was kneeling. I thought that it was ill-advised and it was lacking in strategy. <laughs> because when you do that, whether you like it or not, what you are in effect doing is you are putting for-profit billion dollar businesses at the forefront of social change. 
billion for-profit billion dollar conglomerates don't care about social change what they care about is making money social change is counterintuitive to making money but what is intuitive to making money is good pr so what the nba and the nfl will do is they will adopt this stuff and they'll put names on helmets and they'll put stuff on back of jerseys and they'll spray paint basketball courts and end zones in football fields because it's good PR, good enough PR, so that they can seem as though they're on the right side of history. Good PR goes hand in hand with good business moves. It helps them make money. They don't actually care about fixing any of this stuff. They just want to be on the right side of history, not piss you off and make money in the process. And here's the thing about that. Good for them. If I ran a business, you know what I want my business to do? Make money. I don't care about your cause. I just want to make my money. I just want to make my money. That's my, my obligation is to my business, my employees, and the people my business serves. And I can't serve those various facets well enough if I'm in the tank financially, if I'm bleeding red. I right. got to be black. So mm -hmm. my priority is to make money. But what SJ, but what social, but what the social justice movement started doing, which preceded George Floyd, it actually started with Colin Kaepernick, was they started to make these for-profit billion-dollar organizations responsible for social change, which is ridiculous. You can't have both of those things at the same time. It's not going to work. But it, it, it's not going to benefit you, you, the person who cares about these changes in the streets. You're not going to be the one who benefits from this stuff. The, the, those who are going to benefit from it are going to be the leagues because the positive PR is going to help them. It's going to benefit their corporate sponsorships. It's going to benefit their stock prices. It's going to benefit all this stuff. And they're going to end up making money off of what you care about in terms of it being an actual cause. So, like, I didn't like it either. I'm on Phil Jackson's side. It was goofy to me. Because the NBA is going to make money off of this and it's not going to help the people who are being adversely affected by these various things. Now, if you if you if you want to say that the NBA players have an opinion and they should voice their opinions and so you shouldn't be on that shut up and dribble stuff, then fine. OK, yeah, right. they should have their opinion and they shouldn't be silenced. I'm with you on that. But Phil Jackson ain't contesting that. He's contesting the iconography. Right saying what change was implemented by putting this stuff on the back of jerseys and putting that stuff on the court right I would argue absolutely nothing mm -hmm. and him expressing that is not indicative of his latent racism that's taking the judgment on his comments too far in my opinion and the thing is the nba and here's the thing the nba in the aftermath of all of this started their whole initiatives where they would try to target low-income and disenfranchised communities to help give them opportunities in the NBA. So, and I know this for a fact because I have a friend, I know someone personally who goes to Howard. He's in the NBA, not an NBA, but he's he's getting his master's in uh uh in 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 HR. He's getting he's getting a master's in HR from Howard. He goes to an HBCU. He had an internship with the Miami Heat last summer. And that internship with the Miami Heat last summer, he was able to get because the NBA directly targeted HBCUs for internship programs. That's a positive thing that came out of this stuff. And it directly impacts these people in these communities because you're affording people with at least the opportunity to seek financial freedom through the NBA which is what racism is all about, is freeing yourself from economic depravity. So, like, that's something that the NBA did that's a good thing. Phil Jackson didn't criticize that. If, Krill, if Phil Jackson had said, I don't like the fact that the NBA is pouring money into HBCUs and low-income communities, I would be right on the side of people who are criticizing him for being a bit racist with his right. comments. Because now what you're doing is attacking an actual initiative that's doing something. But Phil Jackson didn't say that. Phil Jackson was just saying that stuff that they were doing with the court and the uniforms was goofy. And it was <laughs> because it doesn't fix anything. It doesn't. You know what actually fixes stuff? What Maya Moore did. Maya Moore quit playing basketball. 
She retired from the WNBA to learn more about the criminal justice system so that she can be a part of enacting legislation that helps to keep black people from receiving unreasonably lengthy prison sentences. That's a thing that helps. It's an right. actual tangible initiative. Phil Jackson ain't criticizing that. He's not. He ain't criticizing LeBron for, for putting up schools. Jalen Rose, who did this thing before LeBron did. Jalen Rose was building schools in Detroit before LeBron was doing what he did with his school in Ohio. Phil Jackson ain't criticizing that. Phil Jackson is criticizing meaningless symbolism. And I agree with him on that. Y'all so busy caring about statues and the names of stadiums and the names of teams. It, it alludes to the comment that you made in the previous topic about being uh, confused and distracted by meaningless causes that don't actually address the root. So you guys are getting so flabbergasted because you're fixated on getting rid of statues and renaming fields and syrup bottles and rice boxes and getting offended because Phil Jackson said that the stuff on back of the jerseys was goofy, that we're not even paying attention to like actual economic depravity, which is what is contributing to what you claim to care so much about, that the NBA doesn't address by names on the back of jerseys. They don't. So that's what I think Phil Jackson was getting at. Um, and I agree with him. Uh, and you know, I, you know, you can hate me all you want for this, but I don't think any of that stuff is impactful. What Kaepernick did was not impactful. All he did was create a fissure for NBA, for NFL fans to fight over what's patriotic and what's not and talk about, you know, dumb stuff like, you know, making the NFL responsible for social justice change in America. If y'all care so much about these leagues being responsible for fixing this stuff, stop watching the games. Stop buying tickets. Stop buying jerseys. Stop buying merchandise. Don't go to the games. Don't buy NBA League Pass on your Direct TV, on your Comcast. Don't buy the Sunday NFL ticket. Don't spend the money. But if you're going to spend the money and patronize the leagues, don't get mad when a coach has one little dissenting opinion about the iconography of social justice initiatives. An opinion, which, by the way, isn't incorrect. So, you know, I just think that this is where's the beef. It's low-hanging fruit for people to be able to look like they're on the right side of history by attacking Phil Jackson for comments like this. It's easy. It's an easy thing to do. So if you want to feel good about yourself and if you want people to be on your side, because a lot of people don't like what Phil Jackson said, then just, you know, leap to the defense of the movement and criticize Phil Jackson because you'll be able to curry favor as a result. It's a very easy it's a very easy strategy to employ. And it is effective because a lot of people are probably like, yay, Jalen Rose or anybody else who criticized Phil Jackson for what he had to say. And I think that their criticism would be misguided. But, you know, that's just me. Well, that's what I'm saying. The Black Lives Matter, it was, it's so damn commercial that it touched everybody. So everybody knows what BLM is at this point. And it's synonymous with helping black people. Or standing for the rights of black people. Just like the DNC. Exactly. And so so for him to criticize the slogan, the politics of the slogan, for him to criticize that, it's not criticizing black people. Then, uh, then him say, hey, man, don't bring politics. Because, hey, man, what if the ADL decide to just do the court one day, you know? And just say, hey, you know, uh, whatever, because, you know, Jewish things are important, too. You know, what if LGBT decide to paint the court rainbow colors in the finals? How would you love that? <laughs> oh, you're, you're against that cause now, NBA? Come on now. I want to see these guys in rainbow colored jerseys. I want to see how far <laughs> you guys would take this for the, the trans community. Because where will this end? I don't have a problem with spreading awareness, but that's all these guys were saying every time they would talk to them. I just want to spread awareness. Spread awareness of what? Everybody saw it on the news. <laughs> well, I'm spreading the, you know, that Black Lives Do Matter. 
Blade be mad. It's like, bro, okay, I don't give a okay. <laughs> That's the, that was that was the power of that campaign. That was a campaign, ladies and gentlemen. Black Lives Matter. And that was a campaign to get your vote emotionally, just so you can buy in to that money laundering scheme. And hook, line, and sinker. They were giving you leaders that you don't even agree with. Leaders that buying homes, you know, million dollar homes off what? Oh, she's on salary from what? It's a nonprofit. Pay, 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 paying her brother for secu- paying your brother for security, six figures. Come on, paying man. six figure salaries for security. Come on, man. And I, you know, and there's stories on YouTube. People go look it up where there was actual situations that went down. BLM came in, did they photo shoot? Collected money, dipped. Didn't do nothing for that man that got died. That that got died. That got killed unjustly. There's stories on this stuff. So BLM ain't there for y'all either. So the politics behind putting that on thing, it was deeper than trying to help black people. Because if they really, if they really didn't, if they really wanted to like the league if they really wanted to do that they would have just said hey y'all can wear like something during warm-ups or special shoes which i ain't gonna paint the court and i know those guys were pushing for something but that was deeper than those players pushing that that was black lives matter that pushed that that was millions of dollars and funding and things going into that because it wasn't anybody else's name on there it was all black lives matter merch and then here it is, and everybody's out there buying and funneling their money, taxing you from a real revolution, taxing you from actually doing something with your money and changing and actually having some reform. And they just, they stole all that energy and put it in a bucket, and now you never heard from it again. And so that, that, was, that was brilliant. It was a brilliant scheme. And it was all marketing. I, I, it turned me off, and I'm black. Right. So I can only imagine how a white guy that feels that has nothing invested in this. And and so we see so what you mean, man. You should be sensitive to hey man, it's just like the whole LGBT thing. I don't mind, I don't care, be gay. Stop forcing that stuff on me. So stop forcing it. Don't put stop putting it on every show, every commercial. Okay, I get it. You know, y'all represent this percent of the demographic, so being that percent of the videos. <laughs> Nope, they got to be in every single one, 50% or more. So my whole thing is, what, what is that for? Who's doing that? And so do you like do you love that? So I get it when white people are complaining when, god damn, man, you know, the Hulk used to be white. Now they got a black Hulk. <laughs> oh man, Thor is black now. No, Thor's Hispanic. They're gonna be pissed. And it's just like, hey, man, I get it, you know. So, but they're doing this to, to everybody, and so Black Lives Matter to me was no different. I already voiced how I felt about it, you know. At me, you know. Let's debate, because this is this is one area that you can't say that I ain't for black people. I'm so for black people. I'm against BLM. Exactly. So, Phil Jackson said nothing wrong here. I agree with it 1,000%. The joke was in bad taste, but he's on the other side of the fence, so he don't get it. Trust and believe, if a white man came in y'all conversations, y'all say hella shit that would offend them. So get over it. Everybody says stuff that you don't like. But unless they, like they, like they really did something, you know, racist, let people's the same opinion slide, man. So, yeah, man, I think this is just more hot air. And we've been programmed to be upset about this and to cancel a person, just like the last situation, versus actually being upset about things that's actually being a detriment to our communities. And so y'all know the drug dealers, y'all know the scammers, and y'all still cool with them. Y'all still do. Stop it. You know? So, yeah, man, I can keep going, man. But uh, see nothing wrong here, Phil. Keep rocking, man. Rock. Yeah, I thought I thought that it was silly. I, I didn't like Kaepernick and I didn't like what the NBA was doing because I don't I, I don't I don't think that it is effective 
to have for profits companies that are concerned only with the bottom line become and i don't want to say that they i don't want to say become political organizations but to step into that arena and you know a lot of people will say well this is about humanity if you care about humanity but that that's the thing though to a lot of people you can't tell them any of this because to them that's just the right thing to do you must be on the right side of history so if you're uncomfortable with it it must mean that you have latent anti-black or racist or whatever attitudes about you and for me i just believe that it isn't prudent to to position for-profit companies to toe that kind of line when you know at the end of the day what's going to motivate them more than anything else is being in the black and making the money generating the revenue which oftentimes is counterintuitive to whatever your social cause is so it's best to not allow yourself to be disappointed by these leagues let them continue to flourish because they do make wealthy rich men out of a lot of black people and just keep it moving and address these things in the arenas in which it's most appropriate. That's just how I see it. Um, you know, I remember back when they went into the bubble and Kyrie Irving, who at the time was injured, so he wasn't even healthy enough to play. When they went into the bubble, Kyrie Irving was saying, because, you know, he was very impassioned about what was going on with the protests and all of that kind of stuff. So he was saying, I don't even want us to go. Every right. player should not go. Right. We shouldn't even play. Right. No one should play. Everybody should not go. And I remember at the time, I was like getting on him about that. I was saying he's wrong for those comments because as a player, your biggest platform is afforded to you when you're playing. That's when people pay attention to what you have to say the most. And to a certain degree, I still cling to that. But at the same time, sometimes if you want to enact some real change, you got to just burn shit down. And, and I've come around to believing that Kyrie had a – that he had a point with that. Um, if you want the NBA to change the world, um, then maybe it would have been best if the NBA had just shut down on the, pro, on the part of pro players protesting. Right. He refused to play until right. things get done. Right. But, you're out, but you're entering this murky space where you still want your check and you still want to play – and you still want to compete for a championship, but you also want to stand for these causes. Like it's like you're dipping your toes in two different, you know, pools of water. And for a lot of people, it creates cognitive dissonance, myself included. I just kind of looked at it as, as you put it, a marketing scheme. I looked at it as PR, um, and it was positive PR on the part of the NBA. They knew that if they positioned themselves this way from a public relations standpoint they will benefit by being on the right side of history and then they can up the TV contracts and the advertising money and the corporate dollars and the sponsorships. That's how I saw it. And it didn't, and that, although that would have benefited the league, I didn't necessarily see that benefiting the streets and what we all, and what people claim to care about the most is, is what's going on on the streets, right. not with rich NBA players. They already set for life. They good. They don't have to go back to these neighborhoods or send their kids to public schools in these neighborhoods. They're already removed from these environments. So we must care about what's going on with the streets and how does making more money for the NBA contribute to what's going on with the streets? I don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you know, that's just how I looked at it. I'm a cynic, though, so I thought that it was hokey from the beginning. And so Phil Jackson, to me, uh, isn't far off with what he's saying. And like I said, if Phil Jackson was actually criticizing the work that the NBA is putting in with these scholarship funds with HBCUs or these assistantships or these internship programs, if Phil Jackson was saying, I don't think the NBA should be doing that because that's political, I'd be like, all right, Phil Jackson, that's bullshit. Like, you know, that's money going directly to people in low income and disenfranchised communities, helping them come up, helping them get better and improve. It's an issue if you're criticizing that. But what, what Phil was criticizing was the iconography. And for that, I, I can't really disagree with him. Yeah, man. So just just if I ruffled your feathers, do some research. But BLM, man, the people out there that just hang on to that, just the hashtag, they got you. Yeah. yeah, it's just a hashtag. 
It ain't nothing yeah. more than that. And then now you want to yell, this life matter, that life matter. Oh, yeah, hey, man, get over it. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> man. They, there's, there's so much stuff, man, that they're making people care about that ain't nothing to care about. And the things that they should be caring about, they're told to not worry about it. Yeah. And so who's telling you to care about this and who's telling you to not worry about that? And then tell me that's just entertainment or the news you watching. And so I'm, I'm trying to get the people. They don't come up with this mindset from nowhere. They're getting told how to think. And people have to learn how to think for themselves. Now, yeah. I, can see if there, I can see if there was a high school where everybody's doing the same damn thing. But this is globally everybody's doing the same damn thing. Now, how is that possible? They're all watching the same programs. Programs. So when they get downloaded in your brain, you start acting out whatever is in that program. You have to think for yourself and not get triggered by three letters because that's why they gave that to you. So if you look at the bigger picture, you'll start to see that everything ain't racist. There's two sides to every coin. You know, there's some racist stuff going on. There are some institutional things going on. But you're worried about canceling somebody instead of manifesting your own thing so you don't have to deal with uh, institutional racism for your future generations. So you were you worried about marching, but you ain't you ain't worried about creating institutions and, and infrastructure for the next generation of black people. Y'all rather raise your fist and wear t-shirts saying you can't breathe instead of actually doing something and, and creating an empire for, for future generations. So that's how they stole the energy. It's a scheme on all levels, financially, spiritually, and mentally. And it vampirically stole people's energy at that moment where everybody was at the height of, hey, what's up, brother? Hey, hey, hey. Now all of a sudden, yeah, like we back at it. Didn't take long. It's just like a vacuum. Zoop, and it's gone. Just like that uh, uh, goddamn episode of uh, South Park. When, when Car I think that was Cartman or Stan or somebody went to the bank. And then he was going to get money. And it's gone. <laughs> and so all, all that energy. Oh, yeah. They're marching everybody. Black Lives Matter. And it's gone. <laughs> Not as kids in Chicago, instead of marching for something that's progressive, they tearing up cars and beating up people. Yeah, man, it didn't take long. So keep believing in something that's funneling and stealing your energy. I'd rather build with my brothers and sisters next to me and, and get a grassroots thing going than to sign up for something that's a tax write-off for people. Yeah. So yeah, yeah man, I keep I is, keep going, boy. But hey, yeah, nah, I, yeah. <laughs> I think we both can, man. That is all the way facts, man. People, people need to, yeah. I just think that you know, groupthink is a. I, I think groupthink is a disease, and we are more conformists and groupthinkers now than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're so we're such a society of conformists and groupthinkers that people are now feeling as though if they don't have that opinion, that there's something wrong with them. Yep. And so they start pretending to have the same opinion, even though they feel like they want to say something different. It sucks, man. But look, y'all need to like pay attention to the kind of stuff that you support. If wearing a shirt or putting a all black photo on your Instagram page, whenever there's a tragedy makes you feel like you're a part of something or complaining that you want Aunt Jemima taking off a syrup bottle or Uncle Ben taking off the rice box or, or the Indian off the Lando Lakes butter box. If that makes you feel like you're making the world a better place, then they got you. Um, because one thing that these one thing that these entities will do is they will take advantage of your short sightedness um, and they will revel in the fact that they can keep their machine going. Because all they because they know that all they have to do is placate you by, you know, giving you something to feel good about, which usually is what symbolism amounts to. So it's like, you know, corporatocracy can continue to thrive so long as they know all they got to do is just take an, an Indian off a box and you'll be happy for another 10, 20 years or get rid of Aunt Jemima or rename a stadium or rename a football franchise. And that's going to that's going to make people feel good about themselves for the next several generations. Um, yeah, I don't think Phil Jackson said anything wrong, man. I don't. It's just know what to support and trace the money. Put your money behind people building schools in your communities. 
so long as it's if, if privately owned, privately owned, not publicly funded, because that stuff usually matriculates to the pockets of people who don't deserve it and who don't care about you. But if you got people building schools or community centers, gymnasiums, things like that, or hosting you know, festivals or yearly events, and these things are grassroots events and they're privately funded by the people who live there, you know, that's the kind of stuff that actually helps people, not supporting political organizations that rely on lobbying and, and um, you know, grandstanding from political candidates, which is what BLM is. And I didn't even touch on BLM. I'll let you have that stuff. Okay. I was more so focusing on the symbolism behind the movement, mm -hmm. but all of it, you know, if you come, all of it combined is BS. Exactly. So, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it sucks. But yeah, I, I think that the criticism being levied at Phil Jackson is heavy handed. Clearly, I think it's too much. I don't think that his opinion like that is an indication of his racism. And if it is, then I'm also, you know, a homophobic, transphobic, crazy person. You might as well just throw me in that boat, too. I'm a hater, yeah, I'm too. About to say, I think I don't want to see. Yeah, because I don't want to see PSAs and slogans and nothing like that before uh, any of my stuff. I don't want to see it. Like if I was a gamer and I was into playing a video game and all of a sudden I started seeing DLC about this kind of stuff on my game, I'd stop playing the game. Personally, I would. Um, because what is it solving? All you're doing is making me capitulate to this thing on something that I love to do when the real issues are going on out there in the streets. Exactly. exactly. I don't know. But whatever, man. Stay up, Phil. You're still the greatest coach ever in my book, man. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but that's it for tonight's stream man appreciate everybody for tuning in uh, we certainly appreciate the support as we like to say on this and every other video uh, if you happen to catch wind of this content now or in any of the standalone videos go ahead and hit that subscribe button join the tribe as we continue to grow the community we certainly appreciate you support this logical content um, you can find Conscious Approach on Instagram at ConApproach, C-O-N-A-P-P-R-O-A-C-H. And you can also find me on Instagram at JVWins, J-V-W-I-N-S. Wherever you're watching this video, whether it's on YouTube or on the uh, Facebook page, uh, go ahead and hit that uh, share button. Share the video, hit the like button, leave a comment, let us know what you think. Agree, disagree, or if we're crazy, it's all love. We ain't tripping. Um, be on the lookout for Conscious Approach. Uh, on your favorite podcast platforms because we're putting the audio feeds on there as well. Um, the work on that is almost complete. Looking very forward to it. So, yeah, man, uh, don't be a group thinker, man. Think for yourselves. And whatever opinion you formulate as a result, we can live with the result, but just don't follow away because you think that's what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but on that note, we appreciate you for tuning in, and I'll certainly catch you on the flip side. Yep, yep. And the name is Dogon SS. You can find me on Instagram at Dogon underscore SS, on YouTube at Dogon SS, and on YouTube at Hurricane Dogon. All right. And as I say on every part, everybody, don't be too high, don't be too low. Keep it calm, keep it chill, keep it player. All right. Make sure no, make sure you don't let nobody get you off your pivot. All right. And um, just like all of these social justice warrior things and all this cancel culture stuff and all this group thing, because if you think and like the crowd, then you're not on your square. And, you know, and so you got to be balanced. Can't be too excited about this stuff. You can't be too mad about somebody saying something. And if you if you keep it like that, then these people can't trigger you. You can go through your phone and you ain't going to get triggered whenever they try to give you a new event or throw some stuff in your face. You know, so you can process things better and you don't take on that stress that they're trying to pass through you through these phones. All right. So until the next time, everybody, we'll catch you all on the flip side. Skr, skr. Yes, sir, man. Another conscious approach video in the books. We out of there. Peace. Go Heat. Go Canes. Go Dolphins. Go Panthers. Marlins. <laughs> <laughs>